Hello, I'm Dr. Ray Self, and welcome to Self Talk. Are you tired of repeating the same destructive patterns and unhealthy relationships? It's time for you to get rid of your frustrations and cross over into your promised land. Join me now for real answers to tough issues. Appreciate you being with me today. Have you ever struggled with actually accepting who you are? Now, I know that sounds like a, not a very hard question, but actually for many people it is. Growing up in a Christian home in a very strict Christian background, I was taught what I was supposed to do, what I was supposed to say, what I was supposed to believe. I was taught to be polite, don't say cuss words, don't drink, don't smoke, don't gamble, don't do a lot of things, okay? And it was a great church. It was a great, great background, so to speak. But there was always this standard that I knew I was supposed to, to live by. There was a standard, a Christian standard, a biblical standard that, that I was taught that I, that I should live by. You know, this, this standard of you, you, you have nothing but pure thoughts. You read your Bible every day. You pray every day. You, 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 like I said, you never say a curse word. You don't gamble. You don't smoke. You know, you don't lust after women. You, you live this, you live this Christian life because that's what the Bible says. And that's what my Sunday school teacher taught me growing up. And then on the other side of the coin, there's the real me, <laughs> the person who messes up, the person who may have an impure thought, the person who uh, doesn't always live to the biblical standards. There's the, the, the real race self, the race self that's uh, not perfect, the race self that has some issues, the race self that struggles, the, the race self that, that worries about things, the, the race self that when I was young, they would look at girls, maybe in the lustful manner. There's a the race self that uh, was good at some things, not so good at others. I had insecurities. I had strengths. I had gifts. I had talents. There was all kinds of stuff about me. But, but then there was the race self that was supposed to be Christian and and always living this holy, this holy existence. And I I don't know. You know, there was a struggle between who I thought I was supposed to be and who I am. In other words, a struggle between this model Christian I was taught and then what I'm actually experiencing every day. So what I found myself doing is I found myself resenting myself and being discouraged with myself and, and, and down on myself. And in a way, I, I was conflicted because I knew I was a Christian and I was supposed to live this certain lifestyle, but I, but I wasn't always able to do it. And so it was like there was two sides to me, and there was the, the real Ray, and then there was the ideal Ray, but the real Ray didn't really like the ideal Ray because he couldn't do it, and the ideal Ray was disgusted with the real Ray, and so there was an internal war, and I call it the real self and the ideal self. You see, the, the ideal self gets upset with the real self, but see, the reality is we're all a painting that God is still painting. We're a picture that has not been completed yet. And that's reality. You see, it's not black and white. I have friends that are very black and white. Either you're there or you're not there. You've either made it or you haven't made it. You know, those black and white extreme personality types. But you see, we're all a work in progress. And what I've learned over the years is I've learned that it's okay to accept myself as I am. Let me tell you let me tell you a story. I remember many years ago I was taking a walk. I actually remember it was a path around a lake. And I was walking around this lake and I kept thinking to myself, I've just got to get it together. I've just got to get right with God. I've just got to I got to get it going. You know that feeling? I just got to get it going. Then I remember it was like I heard a voice and I know it was the Lord speaking to me. It was in my heart. But the voice said to me in my heart, said, Ray, I love you just as you are, but I'm not going to leave you as you are. And all of a sudden, the light bulb went off. And I, and I really understood what the Lord was trying to tell me. He was saying, Ray, I love you just like you are with all your issues and all your stuff. 
but I'm working on you. And it's okay to be who you are. Right now, today, it's okay to be who you are. And I realized I was a work in progress, and that was okay. And yeah, I had issues and strengths and, and, and weakness and things I really needed to work on and things I needed to do better, but that was okay with God. He was working with me. And what that did to me, that lesson was this, that I knew that I could love myself as I was. I didn't have to, to get somewhere in order to really, to really love myself. I hope that makes sense to you. You see, in Psalms 139, 14, the, the scripture says, I will give thanks to you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You see, each one of us is fearfully and wonderfully made. And all of us, everyone listening to me, we have an imperfect self. We're imperfect, but we need love. And I, you know, I know God loves me. I don't always feel it. But the struggle I had, and I think the struggle many of my listeners have, is loving yourself unconditionally, just as you are, even when you're not living up to that biblical standard that we should all um, adhere to and we should all strive for. You know, with the Holy Spirit help, you know, we can get there, but I'm not there yet. It's a slippery slope, folks. There's days when I'm, I'm, I'm climbing that mountain and I'm doing really well. And there's other days when I slip back. And there's days when I'm making progress and there's days when I'm not making progress. But I do believe over the many years I've been a Christian that I've made a lot of progress. But I have some bad days. I have slip ups. And I have times when I disappoint myself. And I have times when I'm, I'm angry with myself. And I have times when I'm discouraged with myself. But I've learned that God expects me to still love myself unconditionally. You see, the fight between who I think I should be and who I really am needs to stop. We need to stop that. And if you if you have this ideal person that you think you should be, but you're not, and you're at a war, it's time to stop the war. I, I use uh, I love to play golf, and I, I use this golf analogy. It's like um, I'm on the first tee. It's a Saturday morning, you know, on the on the golf course. It's a beautiful par four, and I'm on the first tee, and there's people standing around watching me. And I get up with my driver, and I swing the golf club, and I hit the ball straight down the fairway, 330 yards. And all the guys around me go, man, good shot. Wow, that's incredible. How did you do that? Then there's the real me. I get up on Saturday morning on the first tee and I shank it to the right. And if you're a golfer, you know what I'm talking about. And you see, and then I get angry. See, the ideal me was this uh, professional golfer, you know, the Jack Nicholas. But the real me is Ray Self who hits some terrible shots and every now and then a good shot. And I had to learn to accept that. You see, we have to be able to integrate the good and the bad within all of us. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't work on our issues, and I'm not saying that we should that sin is okay. I'm not saying that. But I am saying unconditional love means exactly what it says. Unconditional love. And it's like we we we're prone to give this to other people. We work on giving this to our wife and our friends and our people that we know, but we don't give it to ourselves because we've got this war because we're not who we think we should be and we're disappointed in ourselves and the real self is 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 in conflict with the ideal self and the ideal self is really disappointed with the real self and you got this war going on and the truth is we're neither perfect or imperfect we're just who we are we're just who we are you see the challenge is to love ourselves unconditionally it is a challenge the perfect christian we think we should be it's not realistic and it just causes stress and then here's a big one Pay attention to what I'm saying here. What we do because of our slip-ups and our failures is we get into a very, very, very bad trap. And that trap is called self-judgment. Self-judgment. You see, I, I slipped up and, 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 I, and I said a bad word that I shouldn't have said. Here comes the judgment. Oh, man, I'm just a worm. Oh, I, can't, I can't believe what a bad person I am. I can't believe... Um, how unworthy I am. I can't believe I'm even a Christian. Judgment, 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 judgment. I want to tell you something. Hear me closely, listeners. Self-judgment, no pun intended, self-judgment is wrong 99% of the time. 
The judgment that is true and just is God's judgment. And God has judged you through the blood of Jesus Christ. God has judged you through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian and you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, he made a sacrifice for you to make you right with God. He made a sacrifice for you to forgive your sins. He made a sacrifice for you to reconcile you. He made a sacrifice for you to redeem you. And now God has judged you as holy. God has judged you as his son. God has judged you as, as a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You see, God's judgment sees you through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's the judgment we have to accept. Self-judgment is wrong 99% of the time. God's judgment through the blood of Christ is always correct of you. Now, here's the problem. Again, we forget who we are in Christ and we get angry with ourselves. We can't accept ourselves. Now, I'm giving you truth that we should stop judging ourselves, but we'll still do it. I'll still do it. If you're listening to me, we've all done it and I'll probably do it again tomorrow. It's not a good thing to do, but the challenge is, Will I be able to accept myself, love myself, appreciate myself, care for myself unconditionally? You see, it's difficult to give unconditionally lo unconditional love if you don't have it for yourself. I cannot give you a $20 bill if I don't own a $20 bill. And it's difficult to love unconditionally when I have not received unconditional love. And yes, I know God gives it to me but we have to give it to ourselves. You have to allow yourself to be real. Allow yourself, you know what? I, I fail, I mess up, I make mistakes, but I do some things really well. And I do some good things too. That's just who I am. And I need to work on some things. That's who I am. I, I need to be forgiven for some things. That's who I am. I, I need to, to work on and pray that I can get stronger in certain areas. That, that's who I am. And I have failed in other areas. I made some mistakes. I said some things I shouldn't have said. I did some things I shouldn't have done. And that's not good. But that's, that's part of race self. That's part of who I am. And I'm working on it. And God is helping me. There, there's a, there's, I'm a work in progress. And so are you. And we've got to be able to love the work in progress. Can you love the work in progress? And instead of hating the work in progress because you're not this ideal Christian you think you're supposed to be, you're not there yet. Nobody's there yet. The only one that ever made it was Jesus. Even the Apostle Paul complained about the things he would do. You know, he things he does not want to do, he does. You see, Romans 8, 16 and 17 says, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, heirs also, heirs of God, fellow heirs with Christ. Let that sink in. That's the truth. We are children of God. Heirs, fellow heirs with Christ. This is God's judgment of us. This is the truth. I don't always remember that. I still need to love myself. I don't always get that. I don't always get that in my spirit. But you know what? That's who I am. And you know, we're not perfect. You're not perfect. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, the Bible says, okay? You see, religion teaches us to look inward and always determine what is wrong. But in Christ, you can look inward and find what is right. <laughs> Let me tell you again. Religion will say, look inward and find what's wrong with you. But Christ will say, find what's right with you. You see, finding what brings us approval in Christ will take care of your faults. In 1 Corinthians 11, 28, there's a scripture that's, led, that's read many times uh, during a communion. And it says, 1 Corinthians 11, 28, let, it, let a man examine himself and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. But in the scripture, when it says, let a man, now hear me now, let a man examine himself. Examine in this verse means to inspect for approval. Let each man inspect himself for approval. Where is our approval? Our approval is not in our works. We're saved by grace, not by works. Our approval is in Christ Jesus. If you know you've been approved in Christ Jesus by his sacrifice, by his blood, because you have accepted him, that makes you approved. Do you understand that? You're approved because of Christ. You're not approved because of anything you could do. You're approved because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Right wins over wrong. Truth wins over lies. I hope you I hope you get this. I struggle with this. I struggle with self-condemnation, self-criticism, getting down on myself. 
And yeah, I mean, I do get discouraged when I make mistakes. It's natural. But what we should be doing is I make a mistake. What did I learn from that mistake? And many times, if as Christians, we make these mistakes and we get convicted. And the conviction actually propels us to do better. And that's what being a Christian is. And that's okay. What Satan does is he comes in, you make a mistake, and he condemns you. And he shames you. Remember, Scripture says there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. So when you make a mistake, if you're feeling condemnation and shame, that's not coming from the Lord. Jesus took that to the cross. Conviction comes from the Lord. So the bottom line is here. Love yourselves, no strings attached. We have a commandment to do that, to love God, to love ourselves, to love our neighbor, love our enemy, love, love, love. Can you love yourself despite your stuff, despite your weaknesses, despite your issues? Can you do that? It, it, it takes a little effort because our tendency is to beat ourselves up and get discouraged because we're not living that ideal Christian life. We're real people, but real people in our, with our issues, in our reality, it's okay. And this is the place where God works. And this is the place where God heals. And God knows who we really are. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our issues. And this is where God works with us. It's time to get real about who we really are. Get real with your weaknesses. Get real with your, with your stuff. And know, and know this. Know that you're approved no matter what. You're approved. Love yourself. No strings attached. No strings attached. Stop the war. Stop the war. You're not the ideal Christian. Nobody is. We're all a work in progress. We have good days and bad days. We make mistakes and we do some things well and some things not so well. But love yourself. Love yourself so you can give love. Love yourself. Love yourself so you can grow. Love yourself so you can improve. Love yourself so you can be healed. Love yourself so you can overcome. Do you get it? I hope you get it. This is Dr. Ray Self. I want to encourage you, please check out my new book, Hear His Voice, Be His Voice on Amazon.com. I had a book I published three or four years ago called Redeeming Your Past, Finding Your Promised Land. That's how to get into your purpose. Check out my website, icmcollege.org. I'm very blessed to be president of the International College of Ministry, a Holy Spirit-filled seminary that is accredited in online work on your own time and affordable. It is really cool. There's some free lessons you can take, free evaluations, icmcollege.org, International College of Ministry. Check it out. Lord, I thank you for this time together and for every listener who's listened to my voice. I thank you, Father, that we are wonderfully and fearfully made. We're not perfect, Father. Lord, forgive us for our slip-ups. Forgive us for our mess-ups. Forgive us, Father, for the times that we miss the mark, Father. We, we confess those times to you, Father. But Lord, I know you love us unconditionally. You gave your son to prove it. Father, help us not only to accept your love, but love ourselves, Father. And out of that love, get your healing and get your restoration. And out of this unconditional love from you and from ourselves, the ability that we'll have the ability to love others even more. Give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm Dr. Ray Self. God bless you. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review the show on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Your review helps the show reach more people and spread the gospel. Please visit my website at icmcollege.org for more information and some really cool free stuff. Be sure and like me on Facebook. Check out my YouTube videos. You can also purchase my latest book, Hear His Voice, Be His Voice, on Amazon.com.